I survived 100 days in modded one block skyblock. Now, if for whatever reason you don't know what one block skyblock is, let me give you a rundown real quick. You spawn in a world void of all land and life, except, well, you guessed it, one block. Except this block will continuously respawn and progress through phases of the game, giving different items and loot each phase. So now that you're all caught up to speed, let's get straight into the video. Okay, so starting things out on day one, I got to work breaking the block and immediately managed to get some saplings from some leaves. So now we can grow some trees and actually have some wood straight off the bat. After mining some more, I was greeted by a sheep. Hello, buddy. I'll deal with you later. So I got to work on grabbing as much dirt as I could from the block and used it to expand out my little island some more, but uh, accidentally boofed off the sheep while trying to mine the block. I'm so sorry, my fluffy friend. You will be remembered after your two seconds of screen time. Anyways, unfortunate demise of the sheep aside, I did actually get to work on expanding out the island a little bit until I found a dirt chest 9000 that unfortunately didn't contain 9000 dirt, but it did have a stack in there, so I put that to good use, and now we have a big enough area to grow some trees. So I planted down my jungle sapling, and noticed that I picked up three more during the island expansion. So I planted one down in each corner, and then got back to work on mining the block. Until I had two cows spawn, and well, let's hope that these guys don't suffer the same fate as the sheep. After breaking the block for a while, I found yet another dirt chest 9000 with another stack of dirt, followed by another cow, and this terrifying demonic looking sheep, that I wanted to be as far away from as possible. So as the night approached on our first day, I mined the block some more, just waiting for a tree to grow, that way I could actually start making some progress, and also contain all these animals that were just walking around acting like they owned the place. I also ended up accidentally finding an infinite cobblestone glitch or something, because you see, if you crouch down and you right click dirt, it drops pebbles, and when you combine four pebbles, you can make one cobblestone. So I guess that's the thing, but for the sake of fairness, I won't really use it until I see anything telling me otherwise. Anyways, I found a chest containing some wood, saplings, and water buckets, so I grabbed it all, and that was the end of the first phase. And now we actually have some wood, so uh, I got to work on sorting out my inventory and making myself some very basic tools to help me mine my way through the night. And well, I found a lot of food items during this phase, uh, as well as some bamboo that I quickly planted down and then got back to mining. But as quickly as this phase started, it came to an end, and now we're in the underground phase. Jesus, two phases in one day. I'm, I'm getting I'm getting too quick at this. So I decided that before moving on to the next phase and filling up my inventory with even more random blocks, that I'd organize my storage straight away because, well, things are just going to get messy and I really don't want to run into the same problem that I had in the vanilla one block. So by the sunrise of day two, everything was nice and neatly organized, but there was still no trees grown. So I got back to work on mining my way through the underground phase, finding some pretty good stuff and completing a load of quests from the book, but also finding a load of ores that I couldn't actually pick up right now because I only had a stone pick. And I can't really do much about this right now. So uh, eventually I got lucky and had a skelly spawn and when he despawned, he dropped a bone that I quickly made into bone meal and used to make this here tree grow. Finally, we have some wood. So I chopped down the tree and then went through my quest book completely all of the quests getting more of every ore as a reward so that was pretty nice but i mean just look at how many new and different ores there are okay this is crazy and i really don't think that this double chest is gonna last too long if we keep going at this rate so after storing all my ores away i got to work on trapping the animals in this crappy little temporary pen until i can give them a proper home later now, unfortunately, one didn't really make it in, but that's okay, we have enough in there. And we also have a load of trees grown. So I made myself a stone axe and went around chopping them all down and replanting them. And after successfully stacking up on wood, I continued mining. But there was a diamond and, well, I really didn't want to waste it. So I may or may not have used a certain method of gathering stone to make a furnace and smelt down some of the iron. That way that I can actually mine the diamond successfully. I I'm only saying I maybe did this, okay? Th there's no proof. And so after mining for a little while peacefully, uh, Slime decided to spawn, so I broke him down into his smallest form and then boofed three of them and kept one as a pet because I just love slimes and, I mean, just look at him, he's so cute. If you don't like slimes, okay, we've got a problem, okay, we've got a problem. Either way, I'll name him later, but for now it's night again, so that means that it's time to make a shield and go on a mining session. So after getting jump scared by a silverfish and mining some ridiculously named ores and then getting screamed at, I decided to call it for now and get to work on smelting everything down into its ingot slash nugget form. And also completing a ton of the uncompleted quests that I got in my ore book, bagging myself enough diamonds to make a pick. But I just decided to leave it in the chest for now. And so, by the morning of day three, we had a decent amount of ore smelted down and organized. So I decided to make myself some iron equipment to get things done a little bit faster and to feel a little bit stronger. So after that, I got to work on chopping down the singular tree that had grown, and then I began work on expanding out the island some more. Now, I'm going for a very unique design that'll look really, really cool when it's done. So uh, be sure to stick around to see that, alright? 
right because it's gonna be it's gonna be good but for now this is what we have and it's very basic but hey we have to start somewhere so once i used up all my dirt i chopped down some trees that grew while i was expanding and then got back to work on mining the block to try and get out of this phase asap because i really want some more dirt that way i can expand out a little more and also begin work on making things look nicer and that's not to mention the possibility of finding diamonds or anything else more op so during this mining expedition i found some bought yet yeah, bought whatever the hell this thing is um as well as a silverfish that barely existed before not existing anymore and a ton of unique ores including more diamonds and a slime that i accidentally boofed and felt bad about so i gave him a little grave i'm so sorry buddy some more mining and a diamond later and my pick broke so i decided to put all my loot in this chest and then chop down a load of trees that had grown whilst mining then i got to work on smelting down some iron to make myself two pieces of armor as well as making myself a diamond pick and then claimed all my my quest rewards and broke down all the ores into their gem form when i eventually got the achievement for collecting all of the overworld ores nice and before i knew it the sun was rising on day four but it wasn't because this mod pack doesn't have a sun or moon for some reason i, I don't know why but uh, it's daytime now i guess the bright hue in the sky is the closest we're gonna get to sun in this 100 days anyways on day four i began trying to figure out recipes for all the new ores and items from the mod packs that way i can start crafting some of the modded stuff so i used the trusty just enough items to find all these tinkers construct swords right here and decided to start work on making one right now because i know that they can take us some time to make so i made myself some of the patterns and the workstations that i needed to actually you know get to work uh, and then i made some parts a little crappy wooden sword and then i spent the rest of the day just messing around with it trying to figure out some more things because this mod is pretty daunting at first to start out with so i tinkered my way through the night making all sorts of smelters and melters and tables and by the morning of day five i was still messing around with things however we had a nice little setup going but i needed a lot more iron so it was back to work on mining 2k spiders later and i had enough iron to put in this here melter to get it smelting and melting down but that's as far as i can go right now due to severe lack of sand so instead of crafting my weapon good enough to slay a god i decided to spend the rest of my day planning out the outline of our first island that will serve as the main base of operations and block mining island and when i was done with the outline there were a couple of uninvited guests so i just dealt with them and then chopped down all of the newly grown trees to restock on wood and then spent the night just mining my way through this phase and by the morning of day six we were finally out of the underground phase and into the overworld it's immediately finding a dog that i managed to tame with some bones i got from a skelly earlier now we have a fluffy friend but i have to put him to one side for now after mining a little while a villager decided to exist which i really wasn't expecting but hey i'm not gonna complain Anyways, I sorted out some of my storage and got back to work on mining the block in search of dirt so that we can finish out our expansion. And ended up finding a horse, polar bear, and then got absolutely boofed by this here baby zombie villager, who I luckily dispatched and then just got straight back to mining. So I just spent the night mining away at the block, grabbing as much dirt as I could get my hands on. And by the sunrise of day 7, I had quite the decent amount of dirt, as well as a totem of undying that I got from a magic man in the night. So I completed the quest for gathering enough dirt, and now we finally have grass. I never thought I'd be happy to say that, but either way, I got to work on placing down all the dirt and filling in as much of the area as possible, when my horse, I guess, had enough of living and threw itself off the side. I wasn't too attached to him anyway, so I just continued placing down my dirt. And once I ran out, I went around expanding the outlines of the main island, as well as adding a few bridges to the soon-to-be smaller islands. Now, after all that was done, I spent the rest of the night planting down trees, making the final pieces of armor I needed, and then broke all my bones down into bone meal to grow some trees that i immediately chopped down as day eight was beginning i spotted these creepy looking fellas on the side of my island so i made a bow and sent them off to the next life so now we have a pretty decent sized area and i know it's not finished but that's going to take some time to get all the dirt so instead i decided to start work on building some smaller islands on the outside of the main one that way I can use them for things such as a farm to free up some space on the mainland. So I started out by expanding the bridges out a little bit more and then adding some smaller circular islands at the end of each one, filling the middle in with wooden cobblestone for now, which I'll likely change later. And once the first four islands were built, I went to start moving all my animals over to them when I noticed that my slime was gone. So I made him a sign just like the other one. R.I.P. Slippy, I will never forget you. Anyways, I moved all my animals over to one of the islands and then did the same for my Tinker's Construct blocks and a few chests and boom, it's not pretty yet, but it's definitely getting there. So now on the morning of day 13, I sorted out all my storage into a neater, more organized area and now we have a lot more space around the block so I can move around some more. After dealing with all that, I chopped down a couple trees and got back to mining and immediately found a bee. So I gave him some flowers to keep him happy and returned to my mining duties. 
Finding a mushroom, a very angry stray that shot a bee for some reason, a very stabby crabby, actually make that two very stabby crabbies, a wandering trader with crappy trades, and finally a villager witch and donkey to end off the day. Ah, you gotta love it. Now as night fell, I went around boofing some spiders to start grabbing some string to make the last bits of wool I needed to make a bed. And once I had enough string, I went over to shear the sheep, but a creeper just decided to delete all my animals except this cow. So I've locked off the island, made a bed, and spent the night over here comforting the cow after the absolutely traumatic incident that just occurred. Now on day 14, I immediately got to work on fixing the fences around the cow island and then gave the villager a very temporary little shack so he's safe from any zombies at night time. And then I made an absolutely insane massive expansion of the island of one dirt before returning to mine the block, finding another cow so that my little guy over there can have a friend again. But then I heard my villager getting hurt, so I rushed to his aid uh, and, well, it was this crab that was messing him up, so uh, I decimated this man for daring to hurt him. And then I just moved the villager straight back in the box on his own. I, I should have known that would happen, man. Crabs are just, they're, they're something else. Anyways, I brought my cow his new friend and then got to work on making some safer, better looking paths leading to the outer island from the center block. I don't know why I said better looking, they're just wood, but I do plan on adding like stone bricks or something later. I just don't have the resources right now. I also decided to completely change the design around the middle of the center block because, uh, yeah, I just really wasn't happy with it. So I just dug it all up and replaced it with wood instead. And now I might change it from oak to like spruce or another type of wood, but this will do for now. So on the morning of day 15, I chopped down all of the trees and then got to work on building a gazebo type thing over the center of the island for a couple of reasons. Number one, it'll give me better protection from mobs that spawn when I'm mining. Uh, and number two, it'll just look better than fences. Now, it ended up taking me all day and all night to build, but by day 16, the gazebo was done. So uh, I extended the paths out a little bit more, placed down a bit more dirt, and uh, boom, here's our new gazebo. I know it looks kind of funky, but I, uh, I like it. Now, I spent the rest of the day mining in my new safe area, finding another villager. So now we have infinite villagers, as well as a replacement mushroom and a honey block that I broke down and made into a beehive. That way, the bees that I'm finding can actually stop disappearing and finally have a home. Then I found another two villagers and got another dog. And then all hell broke loose. Everything just started attacking each other. I, I didn't know what was going off, but once everything had settled down, I got to sorting out some storage whilst planning what I was gonna do with my now four villagers taking up space on my island. So for the next few days, I uh, chopped down a load of trees and got to work on building a villager trading hall slash home. That way I didn't have to keep blocking them in wooden structures so that they were safe from zombies. Now, I went for a circular design, and I think it looks quite nice. It's definitely not the best training hall I've ever built, but it's not supposed to be. Anyways, once the building was done, I got all the villagers over there and locked them in, and then got to work on boofing some spiders for string to use on beds. And boom, we now have a full complete villager trading hall where they're all safe from zombies and will very soon make us very, very rich. Now, after having a few buildy days, I spent day 22 just mining the block, because that is why we're here after all. So I found myself a wandering trader that I traded with for some sugarcane because I still hadn't got any of it and then immediately found another villager. These guys just don't stop showing up. So I put him with the others and got back to mining, finding another panda that I had to forcibly move out of the center because he's just too damn big. Then I tamed myself two more dogs and now I have five, which made me think if I have five already, I may as well get a hundred because why not? But that's a project for later. Now back to mining. Hey, some more dirt and another villager. Oh my God. Oh my God. Just look at this. P please leave me alone. Okay. I have enough of you. So after losing my mind due to an overdose of villager, night was upon us and I found another creepy frog. So uh, I just had a, you know what? I had enough of mining today and spent the night smelting down some ores and finally smelting down some iron in my melter to start working our sword once again. Oh, and I also expanded out the island a little bit with some of the dirt that I gathered. Alrighty, day 23, it's time for a very exciting day. I know you all love them. Are you ready for it? It's storage organization day. Woo! No, I know it's not fun, but it needs doing, okay? So I got to work on organizing everything once again, and it didn't actually take me that long. And as soon as I was done with it, I uh, went and bred my mushrooms because I got to feed these hundred dogs somehow. After dealing with the storage and the shrooms, I uh, chopped down some trees and made a ton of fences that I placed down all the way around the outer islands, you know, just to make things a little bit safer. After that, I called it a day and went to bed. So we've made some pretty good progress so far, and at this point we have quite a large area to work with, as well as a bunch of villagers. So I decided to get in gear and start working harder on my weapon on day 24, with things still being extremely complex as ever. 
However, I did get a diamond tipped iron sword and I know I could have just made a diamond sword, but I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. I don't know what I'm doing. Anyways, more messing around later. And I made the first part of what will hopefully become a fully working smeltery. Uh, basically something that can smelt down more things than like a melter can. Um, I, I don't know, but that's enough tinkering for today. My head hurts. So I spent the rest of the night mining away at the block, finding a couple more villagers along the way, but they just seemed to vanish or something. I don't really know what happened to them. But by morning, we were still in this overworld phase and I just kept mining throughout the day, putting my doggos to good use. And I don't know why I didn't do this sooner. They helped so, so much. But they weren't any help when I almost died to a Vex from an evoker. But luckily I clutched it out and then scored myself yet another totem. Let's go. And then finally, we broke the last block of the overworld, and now we're in the astral phase. And I also got an almost broken, unbreaking crossbow for our troubles. Lovely. Okay, so after a few days of mining, I decided to start focusing on farming, mainly wheat and mushrooms. So I made a crappy little pen and trapped them in there for now, and then made a little wheat farm just to the side, so now we have a sustainable way to keep breeding them. Oh, and I also finished off the main island by placing the last pieces of dirt. Woo! It's finally done. And so with that out of the way, I made bridges to the next four islands, you know, just so they're there when I need them. And now we have a pretty nice looking area and everything's coming along very, very nicely. So I spent the night chopping down trees and neatening up the area because, well, I've kind of just been planting trees everywhere and they just cluttered everything up. Now, day 27 started out by giving the villagers some jobs, such as these lovely fellows right here that are Fletchers and will make me very, very rich, very, very quick. Just take a look at this, okay? It's crazy. So I use my newly found emeralds to grab some arrows to start leveling up my toolsmith because, well, I really want a better pickaxe. Anyways, after a little trading, it was back to growing trees all over because I need a lot of sticks. And I know I've just tidied this up, but hey, getting rich takes a higher priority than a tidy island. Some more trading later and I was well and truly out of wood. So I stopped trading for now and decided to go mining in our new phase to see what it had in store for us. Now, there was a lot of sand ores and really cool looking marble, as well as these crystal things that I had no clue what to do with. So I'm sure we'll mess around with them later, but for now it's back to mining to see if there's really anything else more interesting in this phase. And shortly after mining again, I found what I thought was a staff, but instead it's a linking tool. I had no idea how to use it, so in the chest you go. Oh look, another phase. That was, that was quick. Now all we got during that astral phase was pretty boring. It was literally just marble and rocks. So I'm kind of glad it's over. But at last, we are now in the magical phase that sounds pretty cool. So hopefully it's a little bit more interesting than uh, than that one. OK, so now we've got a few busy days ahead of us because, uh, well, I really wanted to get a new enchanted pick before this one broke. And well, that wasn't going to take long. So I spent a few days chopping down and regrowing as many trees as I could. And I mean, I even stayed up at night killing skellies for bones to grow them faster. And then I traded everything I could with villagers to level them up as soon as possible. And also during this time, I worked on building out two more islands to use as smaller, cooler looking tree farms, I guess. I mean, what can I say? If you've been around here a while, you know I'm a sucker for cool looking trees. They just look good. But back on topic, after trading for a while, we eventually got a full set of diamond tools. So I can say bye bye to this shoddy diamond and stone pick and say hello to the new shiny enchanted one. Mm -mm. Anyways, I tested it out by mining the block and immediately found a weird magic squirrel thing that was followed by a bunch of really cool looking logs and blocks that I a thousand percent plan on building something with later. But cool blocks to one side, I found that this phase supplied me with a ton of really like funky looking wildlife that I had no idea what to do with or what they did, but hey, they made the place look nicer and I'm not going to complain. Oh, and I also found a sapling for these trees, so uh, I grew it just to see what they looked like. And I mean, just look at this thing. It looks pretty damn cool. Now, after growing the tree, I ended up getting hooked on this phase and uh, all the cool things it was giving me. So I continued on mining throughout the night, finding a load of new cool wildlife and these woodland defender polar bear things that, well, I had to dispatch because they tried to kill me. So uh, sorry for that. Now, the night ended up going by pretty smoothly, other than almost dying to what is essentially a two-legged dog with horns, but he really didn't stand a chance against me. And after dealing with him, we progressed onto the next phase that I was uh, quite sad about because I was uh, I was really enjoying the previous one. Oh, and before I forget, I also completed an animal breeding quest to bag myself a bunch of spawn eggs. So if you see these, they came from the book right here. I already see the comment section, okay? Uh, you've, you've just seen it with your own eyes, okay? They came from the book. So moving on to day 32, things were becoming pretty messy and I realized that I needed a much, much better way of storing my items. So I began work on a second layer of the island just underneath to use as a storage area that's out of sight and has enough room to store everything I need. So I got to work on laying down a base under the main block following the circular design that I'd done basically everything in prior. 
Then once the platform was big enough, I got to work on the walls, but ran out of wood very quickly. So I just spent a day tearing down and regrowing trees again because, well, I was going to need a lot of wood. I swear that I've gathered more trees in this one block than any other like world I've ever been in. It, it's crazy the amount of trees I've gone through. But once I had a decent amount of wood, I got back to work on the walls, finishing them off, and now we have a hollow room underneath our main island. Yay! But now it's time for all that wood to come in handy by making a ton of these here storage drawers because, well, they can hold a lot of stuff and they have a, like a built-in item frame so I know what goes where without having to, you know, commit multiple war crimes against my poor mushrooms. Anyways, I made an absolute ton of these things and they were a little janky to get used to at first, but once I figured out how to add things and take things out, I got to work on giving each item its individual drawer and by the end of the day, things were looking very neat and tidy down here, but we still needed a lot more storage. But this will do for now whilst we progress some more. So I focused on farming for a couple of days because I really want to start work on building my dog army ASAP because they're really helpful. And I also wanted to get enough paper to start making books so I can make a lectern and grab myself some enchanted books, mainly mending. So I bred the mushrooms and grew a ton of wheat and sugar cane and found this growth accelerator thing in my quest book. So I just placed that down and hopefully that helps. But by the end of day 36, I had all the sugarcane I needed to make the books for a lectern. So I crafted it and then spent the night tediously trying to get this guy to trade me mending. Well, not this guy, because I used him to buy bookshelves and make another villager librarian. So it's this guy who eventually did trade me mending. However, I severely lacked the iron to make an anvil, but at least we have the trade now. So I used a few mushrooms, feeling horrible for doing so, and then went to bed. And on the morning of day 37, I realized that I was also severely lacking on cobblestone. And well, I did a little looking around the internet, okay, and I found a few people using the digging method for getting it. And well, when you think about it, it's not a powerful resource, and it's not really amazing to build with, so... Uh, I decided to dig for some, okay, considering it's like the only way that's somewhat efficient of getting it in this mod pack. So after grabbing just over a stack, I got to work on catching up on my quest book uh, because I never actually logged a lot of the things that I did. So it didn't recognize some of the progress I've made so far. Oh, and I also bagged myself some of these loot generators that I can't actually use yet because I need a lasso, but hey, we're actually progressing through the book somewhat as intended now. And that's going to speed up even more because now we're getting started heading into the create mod. Okay, so this mod is basically just about automatic technology such as windmills, fans, conveyor belts, and drills. You get the idea. But before that, puppies. Yeah, look at them. All, all, they're very cute. All right, now we can get started on grabbing the resources that we need to start crafting things for the create mod. So I placed down a chest and began chopping down some more trees. Man, yet again, I've chopped so many trees in this video. Anyways, once I had enough wood, I stored it in this chest and got to organizing a load of things that I'd need, such as zinc and copper. But before we start building all the stuff we need, we need a little area out of sight to use as a power generation room because, well, they don't really look nice. So back underground we go, expanding out with a bridge to, that's right, another circular platform made of wood. I bet you didn't see that one coming. A day later, everything was ready, so I crafted some andesite alloy and some cog wheels as well as a couple of water wheels and then got to setting up everything that was somewhat janky looking but hey it's a way to create power so i added some cog wheels and boom we now have an official power source now it doesn't generate too much but it's more than we need for now so i checked the quest book and then began our work on our next pieces of machinery that'll be an encased fan and a mill now the mill came first followed by a hammer so that i can boof my iron down into sheets but uh, there's a problem with that is i uh, i ran out of iron so this is where we have to wait to continue with the create mod until I find some more slash make an iron farm that I should really do because I never make them and I get told every time to do it. So you know what? I will. I'll make an iron farm. All I need is a name tag. I already know there's going to be a load of you down there in the comments that are really proud of me. This is a this is a big step. I'm actually making one. So I headed to bed and got back to mining on day 42 to try and get through these phases and find a name tag ASAP. Now, I have absolutely no clue what I found during this part of the phase. I was just too focused on getting a name tag. Uh, I didn't even sort out the blocks. I just kind of just threw them in the chest, making a mess again until the sun was setting and I realized how stupid I was because I completely forgot that villagers can trade name tags. So I grabbed all the wood I had left over, broke it down into sticks and went to bed. And now on the morning of day 43, I ran to my villagers and immediately began trading for as many emeralds as possible and then spent said emeralds on bookshelves to level up my librarians. And then I spent the following days just leveling up my librarians and breeding my villagers. Hell, I even made a sheep farm to help with the wool for the extra beds, for Christ's sakes. And I also continued my career as the world's second most efficient lumberjack, chopping down many, many a tree. That I then broke down into sticks and scammed these poor, poor villagers. I mean, these poor guys really didn't know what hit them. But eventually, after working tirelessly and trading and trading and shearing and chopping, 
we finally leveled them up enough to get a name tag. And I had the perfect amount of emeralds left over to buy it. And we also have a glass trade, so that's uh, that, that's useful. They're, re they're really nice to have in a skyblock, so this, this was a win-win. But now, it's finally time to build the farm. And now, I'm not gonna lie, this took a little bit longer than expected, because I completely forgot that I need an anvil to actually name the name tag. So, uh, I just kind of kept sniping the iron golem that spawned near the villagers every time it respawned. But other than that, things went pretty smoothly. I built the base structure and placed a ton of beds in there, and then just got the bios over here, including the zombie that really wasn't too bad. And then I made an anvil and decided to name the zombie after one of you guys. So uh, here you go, Ember. You are now a permanent fixture in the one block world. Anyways, after dealing with the mobs, I finished off building the rest of the farm, and boom, we now have a fully working iron farm, but uh, I don't really have any lava, so it's not automatic just yet, but hey, at least we have a more reliable way to get iron now. So, after boofing a few golems, I uh, headed to bed after my hard day's work. Alrighty, so day 47. We have an iron farm, a villager trading hall, and full diamond tools. But we still only have iron armor. So I smelted down some stone into smooth stone and made myself a blast furnace and then began trading with my newly found armorer to kit myself out in diamonds. Now, it really didn't take me long to level this guy up because, I mean, I already have everything readily available to trade. So now everything's just super easy. So I got my armorer trades and purchased a mediocre set of diamond armor and now we were fully decked out. Anyways, I was low on food and wanted to get more doggos. So I used some more mushrooms, feeling guilty as ever, and then bred my dogs and cooked up some steak for myself. And then we proceeded to mine the block all night in hopes of finding anything new at all. But it was just like magic things and petal blocks that I'd seen like a thousand times before. But eventually, by noon of the following day, we had finally progressed onto the next phase, and I was about as sad as I was happy, because, uh, well, we're done with the boring phase now, but I know what squeaky, squishy little buggers await me in this abysmal phase. But those things aside, I uh, sorted out my storage neatly into the basement and then spent the night boofing iron golems. And now on the morning of day 49, I got to work on getting to the nether to get some lava by farming. Now, poppers, how the hell, no pun intended, are you going to get to the nether by farming? Well, it's kind of simple. You see, we need to grow some pumpkins and then make them into these here fell pumpkins that should be easy enough. And then we combine said fell pumpkin with iron bars to create a blaze and then boof it to get powder to craft into these mesh blocks that when combined with a pure daisy create obsidian. So yeah, that's pretty big brain. Uh, but no, I did not come up with this at all. Uh, shout out to Dan's Rob's Probs. Honest to God, his modded series, a lifesaver for this, okay? Lifesaver. But yeah, I farmed out pumpkins all day when I realized that I uh, wouldn't have enough mob drops to combine the pumpkins. So I did a little digging real quick to uh, build a mob farm underneath the island. Now, I'm really surprised it took me this long to build one, but hey, here it is and it works hella good. So I stayed up all night farming out mobs and crafting a load more fell pumpkins. And now, finally, on day 52, it was time to spawn in the blazers and boof them to get ourselves to the nether. So I made a little all stone room where I can fight them without running the risk of burning down all my hard work up to this point. Uh, and once the room was built, we spawned in our first blaze and, well, despawned it just as fast. Now, after absolutely obliterating way more blaze than we needed, um, I finally had everything. So I made this botany thing and then uh, made a ton of these flowers, although I found out that I only needed one, but hey, that's okay. And then I placed the flower down and added some blaze mesh around it and waited a little while until we had some obby spawn in. Woo! I'm actually really surprised this works, but it's nether time, baby. We can finally get some lava to automate our golem farm. So I grabbed the obby and made a temp portal and headed in to grab my lava. But once I arrived, I noticed a timer down in the bottom left. So I did not want to find out what happened when that thing hit zero. So I just grabbed my lava as quickly as possible and uh, got jumped by this ghoul thing here. But he was uh, he was quickly dealt with. Uh, and then I headed back home and placed down my lava in the iron golem farm. And then made some hoppers, placed them down and witnessed my iron golems slowly melt down before my eyes. Oh, you're gonna love automation. Now moving on to day 53, I decided to expand out and build the final two diagonal islands to finish off the area for now. So I planted down some trees on them just like the other ones and uh, well would you look at that it looks pretty nice if I do say so myself. And so on the following day I headed back over to the village to grab another pick that I then combined with my current pick to get a better one with better enchantments. And then got back to work on mining the block preparing myself for the horrors that could potentially await me in this phase. Oh and I also picked up a silk touch pick from my other toolsmith so that I can grab all these cool looking corals and whatever stuff. Now, surprisingly, this phase started out very nice and calm um, and continued to be so throughout the entire thing. In fact, this was probably the best phase we've had so far because I really want to make an aquarium and it just kept giving me the blocks that I wanted with absolutely no guardians. 
until on the morning of day 55, the phase was over and we were now in the B phase because that's the thing. Anyways, I spent most of the day just going through and dealing with quests because I hadn't been keeping up with them. Now, after completing all my quests, I continued work on stuff with a create mod, making an encased fan and then set up this kind of janky looking system to do stuff with other stuff and... Yeah, that's how that's how you explain it. Either way, this should possibly help us out later on to get some useful stuff, but it needs more things to add to it. Now, mechanical stuff aside, I made myself some floral fertilizer and grew a load of these cool looking plants to start using them for other things. Now, I'm not gonna lie, at this point, I was starting to get a little bit overwhelmed by mods, if you couldn't tell, but uh, I just wanted to do a little bit of everything. But then it got dark, so uh, I just headed to bed, and on day 56, I started work on a very cool looking flowery Botanica Island, because, well, I think flowers look really nice, and, well, it'll all be contained in one spot with all the flowery stuff, mod packs and stuff over there. But I ended up running out of dirt pretty quickly, so I did what I could and moved all the flowers over there. And then I made myself some bigger storage drawers, because I once again need more space. So I just went around reorganizing and replacing them, and well, by the end of the day, things were looking pretty good. So I spent the night digging up some stone to use on a massive project starting tomorrow. Now after my long night of digging, I uh, made myself a little auto smelter and began smelting down all the cobblestone that I gathered, and then began placing them down around my pure daisies to make it into living stone, that I then finally crafted into living stone bricks. Now, that's a long process, but it's worth it, because I really like how this stuff looks. So I repeat this entire process passively whilst mining my way through the next phase, which was literally just honey blocks and the odd angry bee. It really wasn't much, it was, it was just honey. And after mining my way through that, we finally progressed into the nether phase. And I also made myself some special farmland because, well, I'm a dirt farmer now. Anyways, after a long night of mining and picking up stone, things were really starting to stack up now, but we still have nowhere near enough for what I'm planning to do. So whilst that's still passively doing its thing, I went and chopped down a bunch of trees for the rest of the day because, well, my stockpile of wood had well and truly ran out, and then I once again spent the night digging up stone. How, uh, how fun. But then I decided on the next couple days, it was finally time for me to build myself a house, and, well, I decided to build something that I've never really done before. I'm building a giant tree house. So I gathered a load of leaves and wood and got to work on building it. Now, as always, I try to build at least one thing in these videos from a tutorial. So if you enjoyed this build and you want to build it yourself, go check out the original creator down below. Go give them some support. Now, I had to chop down so many trees for this thing, but uh, it was 100% worth it because this treehouse looked absolutely crazy. So after building up the trunk and the two rooms so that we can actually, you know, live in this house, um, everything was looking pretty good, but I needed to add some leaves that were quite a pain to get right. But eventually I got them looking okay and we were finally done with our new home and it was looking pretty damn nice so i moved my bed over there and took a well-deserved rest and on day 64 i decided to go and do some mining in the nether phase making sure to somewhat fireproof my gazebo before starting and once we did start i immediately got attacked by this really cool looking fox slash pound thing that uh, i would have loved to have tamed but he was just way too hostile some more mining later and completing a ton of achievements due to the bajillions of new ores that i found uh, i ended up stumbling across this fluid tank thingy so i guess this is useful I, I don't really know but following that there was so so many gems and ores it just just look at this it's ridiculous there's so many of them now i also bagged myself some warped and crimson nylon to maybe use on a nether area later but for now, it's time for our first somewhat natural blaze. Hey! You now, you got destroyed pretty quickly, but I was really confused why I got the achievement for grabbing a blaze rod, considering I'd killed blaze earlier. But if you magically cast your mind back to that day, uh, they drop blaze powder, not blaze rods. So th there's, the, uh, there's the solution. Magma Cube! Sorry about that. He spooked me, so I kind of wanted to spook you. And would you look at that? All nether ores gathered. Let's, uh, let's claim them. Jesus! So after sorting out all the ores, night was well and truly upon us, so uh, I bred and culled some of the animals, and was about to breed my dogs again when I noticed that I left one of my original dogs on his own this entire time just stranded waiting for me on this island. So I gave him a special collar and we'll name him ASAP. But for now, more dogs. After dealing with the dogs, I checked up on my dirt plant and, uh, well, he's popping off. So I crafted some dirt blocks and made a little bit more progress on the botanical island and then grabbed a name tag and named our lonely little dog Dex and then went to bed. And on the following day, I woke up with a drive to get things done. So I put the blocks that I'd been collecting over these past few days to use and started building a giant aquarium around our island. Now, like I said, I don't have anywhere near enough to do the entire thing, but I just want to see how things come out before dedicating to the entire build. But real quick, before we start building, let me just craft some prismarine seeds so that we can have infinite sea lanterns. And now with our seeds acquired, let's get to work. 
Now, I made everything three blocks deep for the slab floor, and I will be adding lanterns later, but for now, I just wanted to get the base down for the first couple. Now, by the end of the morning of the following day, we had our first two aquarium bases built, without any water, obviously, um, and only one with lanterns. But I think these look kind of funky, but I also have faith that they'll look really good once everything's, you know, symmetrical and covered in. Yeah, I think this is going to look really clean. Anyways, I got back to work on mining for the rest of the day, and that night I made an enchantment table and traded for some bookshelves and set up a temporary enchantment area. And then also enchanted a temporary sword whilst I start work on this one here, because I know I was trying to work on the Tinker's one, but I already forgot half the stuff, so we're just going to do this one now, okay? It does the same damage anyway. So on day 67, I need a lot of these essence things, so I just spent the day at the mob farm, because I'm pretty sure it's the fastest way to get them. Now, after slashing my way through hordes and hordes of mobs, um, I went and made an orchid and then a load of other things, such as this mana spreader and these flowers that eat coal and turn it into mana, and then set up this kind of janky but very efficient way of fueling mana creation into this orchid that will then do magical things. Because you see, by using some of our precious, precious stone, we can get some prosperity ore because we're going to need a lot of that stuff to make basically everything else. But when you actually convert the stone, the prosperity ore itself isn't guaranteed because it's in the pool with like a plethora of other ores. So it's basically just RNG at this point. And it's also very loud, but hey, it's pretty damn cool. So I spent the night feeding the flowers to stock up on mana and also digging for stone because, well, we're going to need even more now. On the morning of the following day, I uh, disenchanted and re-enchanted my pick until I got fortune and then set out placing and mining stone. And after tearing my way through three stacks, I made a pretty hefty amount of prosperity shards that I then made into ingots and made some progress towards my supremium sword. Oh, and I also added mend into my new pick because I didn't want to lose this thing. And then spent the rest of the day just making the botanical island look really nice and moving all the altar things and uh, pot things over there, as well as adding a pond with some lanterns and then adding the flowers back to finish off the day. Now, if you're the type of person who really enjoyed the uh, the first Storage Day, Storage Day Episode 1, then you're going to love this because it's Storage Day Episode 2, Bigger Storage. Featuring the 2x2 two two drawers that I had to craft an absolute ton of them and then went around replacing the singular ones. And then painstakingly sorted everything out into the respective drawers. And now I present to you the finalized, organized, neat storage room. And I even had some room left for expansion, but good God was this mind numbing. Alrighty, day 72. Time is really running out for this 100 days and there's still so much I want and need to do. So I decided to use up all of the living stone bricks that I had to get as much of the aquarium finished as I possibly could because, well, this is by far the biggest project. Also, I apologize if there's any janky jumps in this cinematic footage. It was like 4 a.m. I was really tired and I kept forgetting to press record. But anyways, I built and built and built until I ran out of blocks. Not entirely, but I just didn't have enough to make another segment. So I went and made a bunch of sea lanterns, placed them all down, and evidently we didn't have enough, but that's okay, I just filled up the ones that were complete with water, and left the other ones for now. And once the water was added, I popped a few torches around the sides, and boom, we're donezo, well, at least for now. Day 77, we mining again. Now, other than a few blaze, magma cubes, and cool flame dogs, there literally was just ore, like, just so much ore. But eventually we hit the second to last phase, the end. So I spent some time placing down some more stone and grabbing some more ores from this magical flower, and I also did a little science experiment with adding a pure daisy there to see if it'd convert the stone immediately, but it, it didn't, so I just put the orchid back. Once I ran out of stone, I took all my iron ore over to the crusher and finally got some use out of it. After crushing everything down, I washed it and then completed all my remaining collectible quests, and then grabbed my lovely clean nuggies. Yeah, I realize that that's kind of pointless, but hey, you completed a quest, so it did something. And after all that, I made another room directly underneath my storage area that I then used to move all my plants down there, so that way they're out of the way and they're neatly organized. Now, I did actually add some more seeds, as well as making a diamond seed, because, well, I need a lot of them for the Supremium Armor and whatnot. So, yeah, plant room. What else is there to say? Plants grow here. Now, on day 79, the island that was once upon a time used for Tinker's Construct is no longer in use for me right now, so uh, I decided to do a little bit of remodeling and made it into my animal farming island, because these guys have just been chilling here for way too long, and they just they make the island look bad. So once everything was ready, I lured them over, trapped them in. Um, although they're better off over here because they have more room. Anyways, I cleared up the island a little bit and then moved the enchantment area to the upper room of my house because it just fit perfectly in there. It was too good to pass up on. And once everything was moved, I called it a day and went to bed. 
And as soon as I awoke, I got to work on making more progress on my Supremium stuff. Now, I didn't get too far, but we are slowly getting there. I just need a ton more diamonds, and I really think that the fastest way of doing it is with some stone and the ore magic. So I made a bunch of stone seeds and had them growing in the background just to speed things up. That way, I don't have to dig at night anymore. So after planting down the seeds, I decided to mine the block for the rest of the day, and this time, I found a ton of new end-themed ores, as well as endermen, ender slimes, poison clouds, and I don't know what ever weird abomination this thing is just just look at it and it hurts too it, it's an absolutely awful thing there's another one as well uh, 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 awful awful creatures but now on a lighter note watch this ender might get absolutely decimated and so after a while of mining we had now collected every ore in the end so i went and grabbed everything from my quest book and now the sun was rising so I decided to go and clean up the main island a little bit just to have things look a little bit nicer and so I can get rid of all these trees and replace them with cooler, more diverse looking ones. Oh, as well as some more foliage. So by the morning of day 83, everything was redone and looking very nice. So I went and harvested all the prismarine and cobblestone plants and then made them all into blocks. And as the cobble was smelting, I went and added more sea lanterns into the aquariums. And after running out, I went and grabbed the stone from the smelter when I noticed that you can actually craft the stone essence into just normal stone, not cobble. So I just did that and began turning them into ores, just tearing through them. But by the end of the mining session, we ended up with very few diamonds. So I crafted some from plants and made myself some prosperity gems and two new swords, bringing us just a tiny bit closer to the end goal. Now, sadly, on the morning of day 84, all of my animals despawned due to being too far away. But that's okay, because I came up with a genius idea to convert the area into a new place to put my nether portal. So I just quickly placed a temporary one down to go in there and grab some nether blocks, mainly netherrack, because that's what I'm going to use for the floor. After gathering enough, I headed back home being greeted by this skulky wolf. So I dealt with him and then got to work on the island. Now, I wanted to divide it into two segments, one warped and one crimson with different wood types and stuff on each side. But I didn't have enough wood for that, so I uh, spent a while painfully growing and chopping down a load of these nether trees. And to help with this, I enchanted an iron hoe just to make things more bearable. Now, after getting enough wood, I got to work on building the portal. And you also may recognize the design from one of my previous videos, uh, but this time the colors are uh, like, it's two colors instead of just one, okay? It's not just blue, it's blue and red this time. I think it looks pretty nice. Now, for the next couple of days, I crafted my grown items into their respective gems and blocks, and then made some stone into living stone, and into ores for two days straight. But let me tell you, placing and mining both of these was pretty damn tedious. But hey, I need the materials to finish my aquarium. And on day 91, that's exactly what I did. I built the final two segments, added some lanterns and some water to all the remaining ones, and boom! Just look at this. This looks pretty cool and very, very clean. Now, I also went around placing down some living brick walls as well, because, well, they looked better than fences and cobblestone walls. And just overall cleaning up the area. And, well, here's the end result. I must confess, I am absolutely in love with this. It looks really nice. Okay, day 96, the final stretch. And I'm gonna be honest with you, Supremium is not happening in this video, okay? It is just too far away. However, that will be our first objective next time when we come back. So instead of wasting any more time with that, I decided to mine the block all day because I really want to get through the end phase before these 100 days are up. Now, after mining for quite a long time and finding a bunch of ores and endermen and an ender slime, I finally had precisely half of an ender portal. I, I have no clue what I'm going to supposed to do with half, but I, I have it. Now, maybe this was a bug or something, or the, the rest is hiding in this phase. Who knows? But instead of f trying to figure out what happened, I just spent the night storing away all of my new ender-themed blocks. And now on day 97, I spent the day grabbing as many name tags as I could possibly get. And after I had what I deemed to be enough, I spent a while at the anvil naming them after a bunch of you guys that commented on the previous video as a little thank you for the support and for watching so on screen right now are all the names that i uh, randomly chose okay it's easier showing them on screen than it is showing the dogs one by one so yeah if you want your name on a doggo then uh, be sure to comment down below and hell if you want a specific color color i'll be sure to do that for you but uh, yeah thank you for the support you're all awesome and i love you anyways after the day of naming i headed down to the mob farm and spent the night there just swinging away at them for more essence you can never have enough of this stuff now on day 89 i tended to my lovely lovely plants crafting a bunch of diamonds and planting a few more and then made some drawers to sow all my seeds in after dealing with the plants, I made myself some quartz seeds and then added them to the collection. Because if I combine quartz essence with stone, I get andesite, which we need an absolute turn off to continue with the create mod. But that's yet another task for next time. For now, it's time for bed, because my day was wasted on plant.
So day 99, I added dirt and grass to my treehouse island to make things look a little bit more natural and then did the exact same thing for my villager island, grew some flowers on both of them and now things are looking very very nice and I'm glad because things are coming to an end very soon. Alrighty, day 100. I brought all my dogs over to my home island and separated the named ones from the unnamed ones and then went and tidied up a couple of things before then saying goodbye to all my lovely and very helpful villagers and doggos because we have now survived 100 days inside of modded one block skyblock. Now as always, I thank you all so very, very much for watching. I do greatly, greatly appreciate it. And if you did enjoy the video at any point, then please consider dropping a like and subscribing. But that's all from me today. If you want to stay up to date with things to come, check out my Twitter. Uh, but other than that, thank you for watching. You're all awesome. See you all in the next video. Adios.